gotta be honest, bro. I just don't like you. Wow, that might actually hurt my feelings if I actually cared about your opinion. All right, everybody, it's episode 315 of SMG Viewers Comments. Got a question, got a comment, observation, anything like that. I want to hear from you. Leave a comment below, and I'll be more than happy to answer your questions about recording and that sort of thing. Anyway, let's get right to it. Have you ever heard about the church burnings in Canada? I was talking with my girlfriend recently about us writing a doom metal song about it because it's not getting enough attention. Now, the church is burning. The reason they're being burned. Thousands of bodies of native children are being discovered in these Catholic school churchyards, and the Native American community is beyond furious and are burning these places to the ground. And I, for one, agree with them. The pen might be mightier than the sword, but it's a lot easier to ignore than the sword. Still, it should be a lot of penmanship surrounding this issue too. What's more metal than genocide disguised as salvation? Well, instead of skirting the issue, I figured we'd get right into it. This is a big hot button issue in Canada right now. Uh, for those who aren't aware, there was a whole residential school system across the country that was run by a combination of Catholic, Anglican, and Presbyterian churches Mostly of them were run by the Canadians. This is where they would take native children and basically kidnap them from their parents and try and reprogram them and force their own native culture out into some kind of uh, preferable Canadian culture. It's a disgusting embarrassment to Canada, and the Catholic Church is responsible for a lot of pain, suffering, sexual abuse, and deaths, it turns out, because they're finding a lot of unmarked graves thanks to ground-penetrating radar, that sort of thing. A lot of kids never came back from these schools. Uh, lately, there's been some churches burning to the ground, and while I certainly don't agree with violence on any side of the political spectrum, I don't think burning a church to the ground is the best way to get your, your point across. I do believe this is a subject that should be talked about and should have a glaring 10 billion candle power spotlight put on the Catholic Church for this because their uh, comments have been pretty fucking hysterical as of late. Like, oh, we're the victims here. Everybody thinks it's okay to hate the Catholic Church. You fucking tried to wipe out an entire culture, you assholes! So yeah, by all means, do some homework, pick up a guitar, write a fucking song about it, and go fucking protest church services on Sunday and say, stop giving these assholes money. But I draw the line of violence. Let's not resort to that because enough of that violence was already perpetrated on the native children of Canada. We don't need more violence to right that particular wrong. Take their funding away, by all means. Tax the church or better yet, make it so they are outlawed in Canada for the next 300 years or something like that. That would be some justice, in my opinion. Take away their ability to make money from people. I'd like to see that happen. Anyway, it's a really deep subject and I think there could be some absolutely amazing songs written about this sort of thing. I'd love to see it happen. Songs, that is, not violence. Glenn, so you think a band should capture a live performance as a core recording? What happens when the drummer says, Sorry guys, I fumbled the kick in the ostinato triplet bar in bar 79. We should do that take again? Or the bassist says, I play the major third when the guitar solo was obviously implying the Phrygian mode. We have a professional duty to our audience to get this right. Yeah, that's gonna happen. First off, you can't sound like every other band because every other metal band doesn't sound the same. Second, you're saying this is almost every video like it's some secret ingredient for success or a key criteria for making good music or success in the music industry. It's not. Let's be fair. If you make great music, it won't matter how you fucking sound. And if you don't make great music again, it doesn't matter how you fucking sound. Yes, it's great to have a nice sound that's different, maybe than made by Gojira, but I think you're preaching all about running a marathon while people are struggling to walk. So you've titled yourself Bedroom Guitar Hero. Okay. Ego much? Point being about this, oh, it doesn't matter if you do this, if you make it great. That's the whole point I've said since day fucking one. If you use the same presets as everybody, if you use the same sample sets, if you use the same impulses, all that shit, it might be good, but it will never, ever be great because it won't stand apart. That's my whole fucking point. Dig deep within yourself and do something new. That is what it will be truly fucking great. And I eagerly await it from the next Bedroom Guitar Hero. Chances are they're not going to be calling themselves that, though. On the Grow Up Parapoint, had to rename a song that was titled Pedal Massacre to Necessary Violence because the rest of the band didn't want it. I don't know, obviously stand against pedophiles? Back on the whole Catholic Church thing, 10 years ago, I co-wrote a song with uh, Final Stage. We called it As the Empire Falls. The running title was called When the Vatican Burns, and they wanted to change that because they thought it would be too controversial. I'm like, oh, for fuck's sakes. You know, we need a little controversy. That's fine. And uh, you know, again, this goes back to the whole, I don't agree with violence, but uh, we can definitely talk about people rising up against that kind of oppression. There's nothing wrong with that. And about the whole offending thing, I will quote Mike Muir from Suicidal Tendencies who wrote one of my absolute favorite lines ever. And if I offended you, I'm sorry, but maybe you needed to be offended. Here's my apology and one more thing. Fuck you. This video explains exactly why you shouldn't listen to this guy about anything recording related. His 
his opinions match those of people who have never recorded anything in their lives. People who actually make something about their lives and get called upon to engineer. Major artist albums do exactly opposite of what he says for you to do here. Stay away from this guy if you're trying to learn. That's right. I have never, ever sat down with a bunch of chart-topping engineers and listen to them while they waxed poetically about missing the days where a band could come in the studio and record live off the floor and nail it. That has never happened, not even once, especially in a conversation with people who have engineered songs that have sold millions of copies. No, never ever fucking happened. Please let us know when you unstick your head from your ass. Can you get sued for using drum samples? Uh, more than likely not. I mean, like, maybe if you stole a set of samples and put it on a chart-topping record that sold millions and millions of copies, then you might get sued if you didn't buy a license. That might bite you in the ass. But uh, for the most part, probably not. Word of the wise, though, just, just buy your samples. Hey, man, I love your channel. What is your opinion on the SLSL UC1 plugin control? I've been sharpening my teeth on the Waves SLSL channel strip and some other plugins while mixing my band's music. I've been wondering if it's worth it to drop the cash on it. Keep up the fuck you I actually went and looked that up. I'd never seen it before. It looks like it's a hardware controller for the SSL plugins like the bus compressor and the channel strip. Uh, I love those SSL plugins. I use them all the time. I have the Waves ones and I have the actual SSL ones. They had a sale on there um, a few months back and I told you guys all about them. They're fucking fantastic plugins. Uh, here's the thing though. For that price, you can actually go out and buy a couple of actual channel strips. You can get yourself a couple of... What do I got here? I got a couple of uh, Trident ADB EQs and what do I got? A and a drummer DL241, which is a couple of uh, compressors. It's two channels in one rack unit, and you could get yourself basically two dedicated channel strips for less than one hardware controller. And uh, they sound absolutely fantastic together. They're kind of my favorite channel strip on kick and snare. I'm using them all the time, and I'm going to do a dedicated episode on it. Uh, found out about the drummer unit in, on my Discord, actually. Um, a, a guy named the only, only Joey, he said, hey, you really need to check this out. And I'm going to do a Hidden Gem episode on it. It's truly a fantastic piece of gear, and it's basically very, very, very similar to the kind of um, channel compressor you would find on an SSL console. It's very much in that same vein, so it's got that certain type of sound. A lot of you guys have been commenting about how good my mixes have been sounding lately, and I do got to give some credit to that drummer unit. It is absolutely phenomenal. And that's the great thing about that sort of analog stuff is you can kind of set it and forget it and just use it on a couple of favorite things. And it will definitely add a little bit of a unique flavor to your mixes because each unit is going to sound different from the next. As per your original question on the SSL thing, maybe I can get a chance to check one out at some point. Um, I'll ask a few different people and maybe we can get one of them on the show at some point. I think that might be pretty cool. Um, maybe I'll reach out to SSL directly and see if they want to do something. Who knows? Keep your fingers crossed. Great idea, though. Do you still plan on documenting the building of your studio? Seems like it would be a cool series. Absolutely. I totally plan on doing that. Um, I actually went and checked out a location earlier this week in Windsor, and it looked pretty promising until I found out that um, the taxes were going to be pretty much insane on the building. It was going to be like $500 a month just in tax on top of the actual lease. And I'm just kind of like, I don't, I don't know if I can make a business case for that. Like building an addition onto my studio, that might make a lot more sense. I got to go approach town council and make that happen. So maybe I'll document that whole thing, like going to town council, getting approval, you know, drawing up the plans to actually doing the construction and whatnot. Might be a really cool series to do, especially for people out there who might be in the position to be able to do an addition on their homes or convert a spot or something like that. Because, um, yeah, if I can do the whole series over, I don't know, 10 to 20 episodes, that kind of thing, maybe a little five minute updates every week might be really cool. Again, the whole point of this channel is to help people out with their home studio. So this might be the route to go. We'll see how it goes anyway. Thank you, Glenn. Metronomes are for people who constantly play in the time or when they need to learn timing. A lot of classical songs don't stay in perfect time. They tend to speed up and slow down very slightly, which can add to the feeling of the music. The important part is that the musicians stay in time with each other. Oh, I completely agree. Yeah, that's the thing. You don't see an orchestra playing to a metronome. They've got the conductor. He's out there conducting the beat. He's setting the beat. Not my fucking tempo! That kind of stuff. Exactly. So that's that's the key point, though, is if the song isn't rigidly in time, that's okay as long as the musicians are playing together. I think that's a wonderful observation. And again, this is where I come back across the whole let's get bands playing in a room together and playing off each other because that's going to sound far more enjoyable than just stuck rigidly to a tempo map or a grid because that shit... It's getting real fucking boring real fucking fast. Play something else besides standard metal. Plenty of styles are not metal, but are hard music. And hard music is the fucking lamest term ever for metal I've ever seen used. Fuck hard music. Good! 
Out of curiosity, have you ever had a drummer insist on using traditional grip? What are your thoughts on you using traditional grip in the studio? Thank you, and fuck you from Los Angeles, California. I've recorded precisely two drummers in my entire career that use traditional grip. One was a, um, a rock drummer here locally who has a lot of jazz influences, so he played uh, traditional grip. And Bruno Valverde from Anger, I got to record him when I was in L.A. there last year. We were doing the mixing metal in uh, with Waves plugins uh, lesson, and Bruno played traditional grip. And here's the thing I'll say about that. When drummers insist on using that shit, uh, I usually don't argue because those guys can usually really fucking play, and I know I'm going to be in for a treat to just set up the mics and let them do their thing. Chances are it's going to be a real fun session. Both those guys were amazing players. Um, and yeah, my hat's off to Bruno. What a fucking incredible drummer. What a dream to work with. Oh, if only I got to work on those sessions every day. To be fair, Glenn, hip-hop and rap music are beating the fuck out of rock and metal on the front of having a pair. There's a lot of thought-provoking political themes in most rap these days. The biggest one I can think of, remember, is JPG Mafia releasing the song I Just Killed a Cop and Now I'm Horny, where he sampled the infamous audio of a traffic officer getting killed by a PSD to war event. That was dark. Wow, ah, jeez, you know, that's shit I wouldn't want to touch, that's for sure. That is getting pretty fucking dark indeed. I mean, like, but in the early 90s, metal still had a pair. I mean, like, Body Count did Cop Killer, same kind of theme there. And, you know, people had a royal shit fit over that one. And it's like, well, maybe you've experienced that particular lifestyle, you might be able to understand a little bit more. That's the, that's the thing. I mean, like, great music can take you out of your comfort zone and make you face a reality uh, of, and a lifestyle that you haven't dealt with before. And maybe help to see life from somebody else's point of view other than a fucking Facebook echo chamber. And that's the thing, great art throughout the ages has always challenged people and pushed the boundaries and pushed the edges. And I think that's what we really need to be doing with rock and metal again, instead of trying to play it safe and trying to be politically correct. I think we need to fucking start provoking people once again. That's what made rock great before, because it pushed the fucking boundaries. And uh, it's become a very safe as of late and it, it, it's just not that stimulating. I mean, rock and roll should be the, the kind of stuff you crank up and piss your parents off with. And uh, that's just not happening too much anymore. And that's a real shame. Glenn, question. How do you keep the temperature under control in the studio? Because every solution I can think of introduces unwanted extra noise. Uh, I use a ductless split air conditioner. The compressor's outside, the condenser's in here. Yeah, here's the remote control for it. I just turn it off for when I'm shooting. It's really pretty quiet, actually. Um, I, it will give me a bit of a, a whisper when I'm mixing and whatnot in the summer. It's not that big a deal, honestly. It's the best cooling solution I can think of. I went with baseboards in here for the heating, and while they're fucking silent, they do take up an entire wall, so you can't, like, hang guitars on the wall above them, which kind of really sucks. I think for my next studio, for the heating anyway, I might go with some kind of in-floor system where it uses, like, some kind of um, coil radiator system built right into the flooring might try that or we use the pipes and the concrete or something like that i'll have to figure it out one way or the other i'm definitely going to go with ductless splits in that next studio as well for the cooling solution anyway might put two in one for the main room one for the drum room that kind of thing so we can cool the whole building off a little bit simpler fantastic system you see them all over the place and it was probably the best thing i ever put in here to be honest barely a minute into your video and i'm already noticing the new editor snazzy give them a couple of extra coffee beans this week of course, you're referencing the how to avoid sounding like every other metal band out there video. Uh, that was Adam Steele from Hot Pole Studios, uh, his channel. He's a great dude, and he offered to help out with some of my editing. And I got to say, he's doing an absolutely amazing job. I'm really thrilled with it. If you guys liked Adam's editing in that video, please leave a comment. Let him know what you think. Uh, hopefully, we're going to have him on board to do some more of those rant videos. I really like his snappy editing style. I think it brings a, kind of a new dimension to the show, makes it a little more fun, a little bit more worth watching. And uh, by the way, if you haven't checked out Adam, Adam's videos. He does some absolutely phenomenal stuff. He's got a great resource video where he tries out like every single Celestian speaker so you can compare them all. It's definitely a video worth watching more than once where you can kind of pick out what speaker is where and just compare them all. I think that's a phenomenal video and he, he put an awful lot of work into it and should have got way more traffic than it did. It's kind of a crime that it. Adam's an awesome dude and I'm really happy to have him on board. So if you like the editing he's doing, uh, please give him a shout out and say, hey Adam, great job and uh, subscribe to his show. I think that'd be really cool as well because he's really an awesome dude. All right, that's it for this episode. So stop sitting here watching YouTube. Go do some work, you lazy fucks!